Hey guys, my name is Marcel Ernie, and I'm going to walk you through installing a hub on a trailer axle. So we, let's get to it. So, so far what I've done is I got grease on the spindle. I actually greased the brake controller assembly. And so you want these parts to be moving nice and, you know, fluid and stuff. And we got the bearings installed with new races. And so Neve and I did that earlier. So there's a new race on the outer, a new race on the inner and greased up nicely with the grease seal. So, and then of course you used brake cleaner, etc., degreaser, it cleaned up the magnet area and the drum. So the brake assembly is already on, that's pretty simple. Let's hope this just fits over the brake assembly. Boom. Oh yeah. Oh, I did forget to do one thing even was actually, this was the same bearing I took off the other side that was new. So I gotta re-grease it as well. And so I'm just trying to get it, this one's been greased already, so but I'm just redoing it a bit. I'm trying to get it into the back collar, right? Just try to get it in there. You can use the palm of your hand, but obviously I don't need to get all that grease that much. I'll make that much of a mess. So just real quick, run it through the spindles. You can even see the left front. I actually marked it. So this is one thing I forgot to prep. But it was already pretty good from before. I didn't degrease it, so to put a little bit extra in there. So people do take their palm and they like run it through their palm like this is the strategy. But like I said, it's already good to go. So we take that bearing and we put it on in the area and lift up the hub a little bit. Oh. There, to get it to go back in the hub. And we take our D washer. Take the D washer, put that on there as well. And now I'm gonna lose these gloves because they're all covered in grease now. Okay, and so then we're gonna take our nut. And hopefully the threads aren't too messed up. There we go. Oh, it's having a hard time getting that first thread. There we go. So I've done a lot of my own research. You know, I'm no expert at this. This is my first time learning about this stuff this past two weeks of hell with the trailer wheel flying off. And, and so a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on how you tighten your trailer bearings. So I read all the different opinions and saw everything and pretty much going with what, you know, the websites that sell the parts and the companies that sell them, what they suggest. So what they suggest is you first want to seat the bearings. And so I grab my, because a lot of people are like, oh, you should have the bearing tight or not. So the first thing is you do, you want to actually squish the hub assembly because it's going to be loose off the bat. So you actually do use a little bit of torque and you want to spin it at the same time. And you're just tightening it down. You're tightening the bearings down, just choked up, nothing too much until, see, it slows down. It doesn't spin much, right, Neven? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you want to back it off. Take the tension back off. Now it's just finger loose, right? Yep. Now, as you're spinning it, just with my fingers alone, even as I spin it, it actually helps you go a little tighter. And that's about as tight as you need. So it's just finger tight. Literally, you can loosen it with your finger. And then the next step that I want to make sure I know what I'm doing is you want to feel for the play in the wheel. And a lot of people commented on my post on Instagram. It's like, Oh, you shouldn't have any play at all. But when you do your research, you realize, yes, you do want play. Um, specifically from the manufacturers, they recommend it. But people think you shouldn't have it. But they do. So the best way to figure out your play is by hand and by throwing a wheel on. Oh, if I can get the thread started. Oh, come on. This is what you do under a camera. <laughs> you can't get things to work. There we go. Take my Milwaukee. All right. Okay. So I feel just this, like a millimeter of just play. It just makes a little tick, 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 tick. Obviously, I don't know if you get in real close. Can you hear that, bud? Yep. Yeah, I hear it. Yeah. So that's perfect. And as I spin the wheel, I can see if it tightens any more. Oh, it's rubbing on me. That's as tight as it wants to go by hand. Well, that sounds new. You hear it? The bearings there? 
I hear well, it's actually there. touching the brakes. The brake. Oh, okay. Uh, the drum is touching the stuff, so you're not hearing the bearings at all. So then you take this one comes with a cover, and you want it to line up with the cotter pin. If it doesn't line up with the cotter pin, then back it off slightly to make it block. You know, not going tight. So you want to run it loose, guys. Like that's the whole point. That's probably why my wheel flew off. Even is I took it to a shop. They put it all on and they did it too tight. They tightened down the bearings and then that outer race burned right up. And once the race starts to go 300, 400 Fahrenheit probably, boom, the bearing disintegrates and then bearing flies off and then the wheel just slides off and there's nothing to hold it on, right? Um, so, cotter pin and then take your cotter pin. And we just bit. Oh, Ooh. good thing I'm wearing eye protection, right? Exactly, man. Yeah. Would have been Captain Hook, man. Oh, dude, you can just take your eyes out big time. All right, so I bend the cotter pin up, like, and I just like to actually tighten it down if I can. It's not a huge deal, but. Yeah, get it, get it flush on there. Boom. Oh, there it is. That's good. Yeah, and then you can even go in the cotter pin hole. Boom. So that's loose. Wheels loose. Cruising. And here's the one I did earlier on this side. Same idea. Right. Oh, and then the last step I'd like to do is um, you saw I put grease on the spindle in the middle. The reason I did that is, you know, when you pack more grease in with a grease gun, because these are greasables, so what's happening is you're putting the grease through the back of the spindle and it comes out a hole in the very back of the bearing. And then the, as you pump it, the grease goes through the back and it works its way to the front. So the old grease comes to the front. And so by leaving, if you left no grease in the middle, when you go to pump it, now you're just filling a void. So might as well put some stuff in the void initially, just like the back seal I filled up. And boom, and now I'm gonna just do a little more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just fill that void a little more. So now as the grease comes out of the bearing slowly, the other grease is there pushing into it. And the last step, is uh, cover, whatever they want to call it, the cap, and the rubber seal that goes on that. And so this is the seal you take off when you want to do maintenance and just grease it with a grease gun. Bam. And of course we're waiting on new wheels. So we're not, well actually, you know, we could just rotate those tires for now until my new tires show up <laughs> if we want to use the trailer right away. Anyways, guys, my name is Marcel Ernie. I just learned how to do this last week, did my own research. So don't take my word for any of this, but that's what I learned. And uh, hope you enjoyed the show.